through your telescope only to notice that you cannot see anything. It's incredibly disappointing. I know exactly how you feel. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my best tips and suggestions to ensure that you get the best views and those views that you're expecting and hoping for when you got to your telescope. Now, before I delve into some of the specifics, I do just want to preface this video with perhaps the most important message that I'm going to be covering here today. And that is, it is absolutely essential and critical that you understand your telescope, its design, its components, how it works, and perhaps most importantly, what it is capable of. So as we can see here in front of me, this is my Celestron Star Sense Explorer LT114AZ. Now this is a Newtonian reflector, so that has a massive impact on just how it operates. It's on an alt azimuth mount, so it's a point and shoot, so we do need to take that into account as well. And not only that, we need to consider that this has a 4.5 inch aperture. So that's essentially its light gathering ability. Now that's very, very important to know because that is on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of the aperture range. So some of the more expensive telescopes can have, you know, six, eight inch aperture. Uh, and in, in regards to some Dobsonians, that can be much, much more. So it's important to know that. And essentially, what does this mean for this telescope? Well, it means that it's primarily designed for planetary observations and observations of the moon. It's not designed for deep sky objects and ob observing those. And as such, you're just not going to get a very good view of them. So I have my expectations set accordingly. I know roughly what I can see with this and I know what to use it for. So I would really, really recommend that you are fully aware of the telescope you've got, what it's capable of, what it can do, and also just make sure you've got every, you know how to set it up optimally. So everything's, you know, everything's in place, you know, everything's put in, in correctly. That's also so, so important. With that said, I'm just going to delve into some of the actionable things that you can now do, assuming you have your telescope in front of you and you're still struggling. The first thing, and this is really, really important, is if we look at the eyepieces. So you typically get two. So these are the two that I get. So you typically get two with your um, with your telescope. So this on the right hand side, I'm just going to manipulate those so they're in my hand properly. But you typically get two. So actually I'll just show you those in the, in the accessory tray. On the right is the 25 millimeter and on the left is the 10 millimeter. Now do consider that eyepieces are just such critical piece components. Uh, they play a crucial role um, not, only, not only in how you achieve sharp focus but also the how you find objects and the level of magnification that they provide. So here is such an important tip. Always start with the 25 millimeter eyepiece. And that's for this reason alone. It has a wider field of view. Now the 10 millimeter has a higher magnification. So essentially you're zooming in further on the object. With a wider field of view, so you're zoomed out if you like, you can see much more of the sky and it's just so much easier to find an object. So always start with the 25 millimeter. That's such an important tip. It's helped me tremendously. So give that a go. So that's my main tip number one. Next, I think it's, it's really, really crucial that you spend your time practicing with your telescope in the day. So hopefully you've got an object that you can focus in on and just get to grips with basically getting that object aligned. So as an example here, we could use something like uh, the chimney um, or it could be the top of a tree or something like that. But you want to find something that's relatively far enough away maybe 250 yards or so, it could be a street lamp, that kind of thing, or a sign, something like that. And you basically just want to practice moving your telescope and just trying to locate that object. From there, so still in the daytime, so do this ahead of time before it gets dark, and before you try and observe anything in the night sky, because trust me, it's so much more difficult. From there, you just basically navigate your different components. So in this example, I will be, uh, well, you'd want to use your, your finder scope. So this is the red dot finder scope that comes with this telescope. Now, some telescopes come with slightly different ones um, and they have different kind of knobs that you need to manipulate. But the this red dot finder scope operates via, as the name suggests, a little red dot. So you need to turn it on first and foremost, I believe it's now on. You can see that red dot there and you manipulate it via these different knobs. So what you'd need to do, let's say we're going on that chimney, is you'd roughly align it 
just moving the optical tube around. We'd then focus in on the finder scope and just make sure it is aligned. We'd manipulate these knobs here and then we'd start to look through the eyepiece. Again, as a previous tip suggested, use the 25mm, you're more zoomed out. Um, but yeah, make sure your finder scope is uh, in place with the object in the centre and then we can look through our eyepiece. So do all that in the day, get to grips with just locating different objects and you'll find that it gets easier with time and with practice. So that's a really good couple of uh, tips that I'd really suggest that you spend a lot of your time on. They're the, they're the main um, movement, um, movement pieces so they're, they're what's going to make all the difference if you like. Now when it comes to the night sky, so you've got everything set up, now you're going to go outside and it's dark overhead. Now here's some things you can do to make sure you can observe some really good objects. First, aim at the brighter objects first. So the moon is absolutely crucial and is really, really good for this. It's one of the brightest objects in the sky due to its proximity uh, to Earth and just how it reflects light from the sun. So yeah, focus on the moon first you'll be, and you'll be amazed at just how impressive it is to observe as well. It's, I absolutely love watching it. It's one of my absolute favourites. Um, from there, focus on the brighter stars. Um, identify uh, the, the, you know, the, um, the different constellations and just get, get to grips with navigating the sky from there. You can use them as a reference point as well. At that point, um, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, you really need to consider your location as well. You want it to be really, really dark, uh, of course. You want to be away from light pollution. Um, so as you can see here, we've got several houses. It makes it really, really tricky to uh, to get the best views of the sky. Uh, so yeah, try and find somewhere that's really, really dark, uh, and also consider your altitude. So if you can find, um, perhaps you have the opportunity to set up your telescope at a high elevation, take advantage of that. So it could be a mountain, a hill, or even an elevated viewing platform. Take your telescope there if you can, because you'll get much better views, and there'll be much less light pollution typically. And of course, always check the weather as well. So you want to head out um, when there's clear skies. Um, so yeah, check weather apps and websites to monitor for cloud cover as well. I'd really recommend that. Also, the humidity and wind can have an impact as well. Then another tip is the star charts and apps. I'd leverage those. So there's lots of free uh, stargazing apps, also some paid ones as well. So just have a little look at those uh, and get, get to grips with um, finding out what's available to view on that particular night. So some of the best apps, so with this telescope as an example, you get the, uh, the StarSense Explorer app and it shows you exactly what's capable of, of being observed that night. It's really, really helpful. It just help, helps set your uh, expectations. It's also the ability to see some of the harder objects so you can test yourself as well. Uh, obviously that comes down the line. Uh, star charts are, I suppose, the, the older equivalent of those. Um, but they're, they're a valuable tool, uh, especially when planning your stargazing. Uh, a detailed map of the night sky so they're really really good as well you can pick those up on Amazon and other places as well and then lastly my other tip for making sure you maximize your observations and can see things is make sure that all your optics are kept clean and that you maintain your telescope as best as possible so clean the optics remove dust and debris uh, especially on the lenses and the mirrors and, and just on the uh, uh, the eyepieces all those little places use a soft brush and optical cleaning solutions that are designed for telescopes and optics as well you know, don't breathe on your optics and you don't introduce any condensation things like that and then just make sure you store your telescope away properly so you want to make sure as an example that you put the cover over keep everything safe and protected and also just keep your telescope away from extreme temperatures moisture and dust as well so so important so yeah, hopefully with these tips you should be able to see much more through your telescope. As I say, most of it is understanding what your telescope is capable of and then it's a matter of identif well, identifying and locating objects and in the day is the best time to do that. Once you've got that down, you can head out to the night sky and you should be able to see everything so, uh, that you want to, that your telescope is capable of. So yeah, hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. And with that said, all the best with your observations and I hope you have an excellent couple of stargazing sessions.